What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Talk Movies. I'm Brad. And I'm Miguel, guys. And this is our spoiler review of Godzilla vs. Kong. To get this thing rolling here, um, we are going to just start off with our Godzilla versus Kong review because we've been waiting for this for so long, and this has been a huge part of our show since we started, so uh, we're going to go ahead and hop in with that. And then at the tail end, we got a little tidbit of movie news to talk about, just a couple of little things. Um, but to go, on, go ahead and get into this thing, let's, do, let's just set the record straight. And as a King Kong fan, this hurts my heart and it hurts my soul, but... I knew it was coming. Godzilla won. Say it again. Godzilla won. And if you think about it, if you really think about it, as much as I love Kong, it, Godzilla had to win. That's the only... It, he had to. He's too powerful. He's nuclear. Kong can't compete with that. Now, Kong can throw the punches. I mean, he laid him out a few times, but I, I, he won. He won. Would you agree? One hundred percent. And I'm, I was just gonna let you like keep saying shit because it made me feel good. <laughs> Props to but, Adam Wingard for actually choosing a winner and not just leaving it open ended. Honestly, yeah, that's what obviously. I thought was gonna happen because I know they're like, oh, there'll be a winner, there'll be a winner. And then when we knew about Mecha Godzilla and we knew that they were gonna come together at the end, I was like, they're not gonna really declare a winner. They're just gonna be like, oh, you all know who won. But they did declare. They let them have it out, and they let them have a moment. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. So Miguel and I had the opportunity to go on Good Friday. <laughs> we went and saw Godzilla vs. Kong in Lexington um, in a Cinemark XD theater, which was awesome. That Florida yeah. ceiling uh, screen. I actually got myself a nice Wonder Woman 1984 cup for free because they were giving them away. I had me about four Jack and Coke slushies, so that was they were delicious. Good. They were good. They were good. I and had those, a sip of his, and I was like, wow. And they were we're all vaccinated, so. We bad. are all vaccinated, yeah. yes. We are vaccinated. But you know what thing I noticed? That the prices were, like, really cheap. Mm. I was well, they're trying to get people up. back in, too, though. I think they're trying to, you know, and there were things like, like, we got a large popcorn, and they didn't do, like, the free refill and stuff because of COVID, but. I'll tell you what, man, it and I kind of realized this after the fact, it was really nice sitting in a packed movie theater. It wasn't too packed, but it it, was like... I mean, yeah, it was COVID packed. I mean, they still had like the like row like in front of you that was open and stuff, but... Yeah, um, so like, so like guys, like, I hope you realize, if you ever go back to movie theaters, I know you guys, I know some of you like to kick your feet up on on the chair and then you get really pissed off when (laughs) someone walks by and sits When somebody kicks you. Yeah. Now, like each every other section is like uh chained off so now you can just kick your feet up and no one's gonna bother you it's fucking amazing i love it so (laughs) but props to covid it was really props to covid oh my god it was really nice being in a movie theater with other people and i will say if you have not seen godzilla versus kong yet and you want to go see it please try If if you have theaters open by you go see it in a movie theater because i swear i watched it in the movie theater on friday and then last night i watched it again on hbo max um just to kind of prep for this and to kind of like solidify and stew on my thoughts and it is a completely different experience in the movie theater than it is on hbo max it really is even if you have a big flat screen it's a huge difference Mm -hmm. um the other thing i'm going to say before we get into our review if you have not seen godzilla versus kong get out no i'm kidding if you have (laughs) that's too late Um, man we already talked to everything well and we'll, we'll talk about the whole spoiling the movie thing but um if you haven't seen it and you don't want spoilers here's your chance this video will be here or this podcast whether you're watching on youtube or listening on spotify or google apple whatever um it'll be here go watch the movie enjoy it see it in a movie theater if you can and then come back and uh and we'll chat about the movie so um first thing i want to say is hashtag continue the monsterverse is trending on twitter and that makes me very happy because i want to see more 
Yeah. If any, the biggest compliment that I can give to the movie was that it treated Kong and Godzilla perfectly. Like it was, I, I think it was my favorite iteration of either character in the entire MonsterVerse, including in their own movies. Like yeah. in Kong Skull Island, I felt like Kong, he acted weird. Like he only kind of walked upright. He didn't really do any like gorilla stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He didn't really move like a gorilla. And Godzilla, I mean, obviously in the first movie, we literally barely saw Godzilla at all. They tried to do like the, like what they did in Jaws or what they do in some of those classic like monster movies where you don't really see them. You see like glimpses of them, mm -hmm. but it didn't work because- a it lot just, of people were upset with that. It yeah. just didn't work. Yeah. Um, King of the Monsters, they did a better job. A lot of it took place at night, so you didn't really see them. Um, they balanced day and night really well in Godzilla versus Kong, too. Yeah, you know, exactly. even if it was I, at night, it was like really lit up. Well. Right. It was very lit. Um, and it, the, the locations were really, really cool. But it left me wanting more. It 100% left me wanting more. And my biggest compliment, again, is their treatment of the two of them. I mean, it, it, it their portrayal was perfect. I, I really think that seeing the two of them in this movie, um, that's how I want them to be portrayed um, moving forward in the MonsterVerse. And hopefully the MonsterVerse does move forward with this hashtag trending right now. And Legendary already retweeted it. I mean, and, you know, I, I don't know. I hope Warner Brothers continues it god I hope. I hope they don't give me that same bullshit line they've been given snyder cuts yeah and we we really we kind of dogged on warner brothers last week and i'm i they did great with this I, they really did they really did a great job same. i mean I, i'll give i give mad props to them and yeah. i think they did wonderful yeah but they really need they really need to continue this one if they don't want to continue the snyderverse at least continue this because I, I i beg of you this yeah. was a great movie and uh knowing how much more we have to to like pull from in regards to toho rights because i don't know the i don't know the the legality of the rights between toho and legendary but i know there's just so much more you can pull from right. so i think that if you continue this you you like literally the the sky is a limit i'm not gonna lie yeah well i from what i understand i actually looked into this a little bit last night um I believe they have to run everything by Toho. Like Toho, yes. Toho has to approve it for them mm -hmm. to put it in the movie. So like everything we've seen up to this point, Toho has been like, yeah, sure. I don't think it's like that for Kong. I think Kong is an American owned IP. Well, I so mean, they can uh, kind of do what they Toho has Kong. Really? Mm -hmm. I think so. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought because I thought Universal a, had Kong. If you look on the back of uh, every single like Godzilla movie it'll show like the little insignia of each monster mm -hmm. it's really cool what toho does because yeah. like, it shows the insignia of the of the monster and then it says right toho writes mm -hmm. and i think kong has one of its own insignia i think their version of kong has is there gotcha. but i think i don't know I, I think toho got the right somehow yeah well that's cool it's cool that mm -hmm. they've owned the rights to both of them um what was your biggest compliment to the movie if you had to pick one thing that you were like yep this is this was what they did right um i would have to say it would be the i liked how i think the biggest thing i liked was how they made godzilla off to be a somewhat of a villain yeah you know what i mean yeah because that's all that was like a it's a common thing where either godzilla is a savior or he's just a mass destruction and uh they did both and i right. and they did it well well, because, and it, it's, I'm sorry to interrupt you. It, it's yeah. interesting because like you think, like we think as an audience, we think about it from the people's standpoint, because like, if you're, if you're thinking about it from Godzilla's vantage point, he's just doing what he does. You know what I mean? He's not mm -hmm. the good guy or the bad guy. He's just, Hey, I'm King. Like, like don't get in my way. That's pretty much it. But continue. Yeah. I just, I, I thought that was funny. Well, that, well, what I was going to say was that uh, they, uh, when it came, when it came to Godzilla, like, even though like, they always treat him as like a in some of the Godzilla movies, he's like a big villain, but in reality, like he's just like a force of nature. Like if anything is unbalanced, like he's gonna be there to balance it back out. Definitely. And that's that's why Godzilla always either was a savior or he was brought up as a destructor, which is what's because I'm sorry, I'm low-key pissed because like when I first saw this movie, I went to go 
get me more of that Jack and Coke slushy. <laughs> And then when I came back, Brad was like, bro, you totally missed Godzilla's introduction. He I swear, it. like I watched you leave. Off. We were sitting like at the very like second to last row at the mm-hmm. top. And Julia and I were sitting there eating our popcorn. And like it was like it was the people stuff. I think it was Millie Bobby Brown's um, introduction. But you were like, I'm going to go get another Jack and Coke. And you mm-hmm. walked down. And it was like the minute you rounded like the aisle to start walking, Godzilla's fin like came up out of the water to go to Pensacola and I was like he's gonna miss his own he, he's get, literally gonna miss his intro did you watch the intro though I did on HBO? And, so you've seen yeah, it now okay yeah. good so it was a good intro I like I think I liked his intro better than I like Kong's yeah because Kong is fucking uh in captivity because yeah. it was just still raining and fucking shut up now I will say that threw me the hell off love what they the humans made Skull Island their bitch they built that whole containment thing and like like monarch took skull island over and like well there was apparent there was an appearance like i don't know if you saw like that there was like a storm that like happened and like but wasn't it Ghidorah's storm that's what i took it as i took it as when the whole Ghidorah thing happened maybe yeah i think so i'll have to look at it again yeah they i thought uh i thought it was really interesting that they like had them in captivity because they i don't i don't know where that idea that idea came from that like i guess it was like after because like in between of like godzilla king of the monsters and godzilla versus kong like because you know in the beginning of the movie they like sh- showed the bracket yeah and it showed it was fucking hilarious it was like kong and skull crawlers and then godzilla and just behind him was just a plethora of different monsters that he yeah. just, like, defeated so like they finally figured out it. Like it came down to these final two, which kind of pisses me off. But it came down to these final two, and they realized, like, okay, we need to keep Kong safe. So they, that's right. why they kept them in captivity because they know if if Godzilla catches the scent of Kong, like he's she's he's he's gonna go find him. Right. So I to I prove just, his dominance. Like, yeah, exactly. Which is like an animal instinct. It's not the fact that he's right. a bad person. It's just like a, it's just an animal instinct. Because again, these are fucking animals. Well, yeah, and I like that they treat them like animals. They don't, mm-hmm. they're not treating them. Like, I mean, like, yes, they're gods. I mean, they're like, you know, they're, they're far more powerful than anything, than any weapon that we have. But at the same time, they're still animals. They're still, I mean, like the whole fight between Kong and God, like, I know we've joked about this. Cause like, you know, Godzilla's like, I want to prove my dominance. And, and Kong is like, I just want to be left the hell alone. <laughs> He's just like, like the entire, I feel like the entire time him and Godzilla were fighting on the aircraft carrier, he was like, I just want to go home. Like, <laughs> like that was like all he wanted, you know? Um, Pretty much. Now, well, I'm going to say this, and I, I, I wanted to bring this up. My biggest issue was the, with the movie was the storyline. And not necessarily Godzilla and Kong storyline, um, I because about. I thought all of that was fine, but all of the the people, the side characters, um, there was a whole lot that was left up to the imagination, um, and I mean, just anything from what the characters had been doing. Um, to be completely honest with you, there were a lot of really great actors: Millie Bobby Brown, Alexander Skarsgård. Um, I, I don't remember what's Millie Bobby Brown. I didn't Brown's, like his. Her, the I didn't like name. his. Uh character by the way yeah i just i don't know they they had great actors but their their arcs were so i i felt like they wasted them being in the movie um you know and i know a lot of people complained with godzilla and with king of the monsters um with the fact that the people were like the focus point you know what i mean like they it was too much about the people but at the same time, it felt strange going from King of the Monsters with this like very in-depth, thought-out storyline where like the people are weaving in and kind of like working into this battle where mm-hmm. they're helping Godzilla at the end to where this, like, to be completely honest, I felt completely detached from what Millie Bobby Brown and them were doing. There's a, there's a, a review that literally said, if you take Millie Bobby Brown's and her group storyline out of the movie not much yeah. and that sucks because she's a phenomenal actress and i really like 
I don't know why King of the Monsters gets as much hate as it does. I enjoyed the shit out of King of the Monsters. I really did. And I've, I've gone back and watched that movie again. On first watch, I think it was a lot. Like, it was, like, a lot to take in. But in, like, re-watching King of the Monsters, I think it's... I, I, I think it's really, really good. I enjoyed the storyline. I mean, like at the end of the movie, when Ghidorah is in, where was it? Boston? Yeah. Yeah. When, um, when Ghidorah's in Boston and he's, you know, Millie Bobby Brown's there and they're trying to get the, what was it called? That box that made the, the, the sounds, orca. the orca, when, when, just that whole, the build up to that scene where Godzilla, <clears throat> when she turned around and smiled in the rain, because like Godzilla and the military was coming behind him and like what that meant for the story that's an awesome scene and there kind of wasn't a moment where I was like yeah like with the people in this one I I felt like the people were pointless to be completely honest with you even on Kong's side the thing with the little girl was cool I dug that yeah I really did I that was honestly she was my favorite of the people characters in this entire movie and she didn't even talk really all about that The whole thing with signing with him and like they can communicate that I think that was their way of paying homage to Kong's OG storyline with Andero and, you know, him like befriending her and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I I thought that was really well, but that was my biggest gripe with the movie was that I just I felt like it never really came together at the end. It just kind of it was kind of blah. I wish they could have fleshed out um, the storyline a little bit more. Yeah, like it. It kind of it kind of irked me that these two like didn't really meet. Like both sides didn't meet each other. Yeah, they were just like separate stories. Like they, they none of it was intertwined. Uh, Millie Bobby Brown didn't meet any of the other people from Kong's side, and it was just I don't know. It was just like two separate stories, and you know at one point they have to like collide with one another, and they didn't really do that. Like yeah. it was like two separate stories, which is cool to a certain degree, but. I just thought whenever Kong and Godzilla finally met up, I would think the go- the Godzilla team and the Kong team would meet up too. Yeah, I thought that would be interesting, but that didn't happen. But it's hard to have um, decent human element in a type it of is. monster movie. It is, and that's why I mean it 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 was my biggest complaint. But it you know I I tried to not let it bother me too much, but at the same time like you know, this is the fourth time, like, it almost feels like a little bit of an excuse to be like, oh, but this is about the monsters. I know it's about the monsters. Like, I mean, let's be honest, we were there to see Godzilla and Kong kick the crap out of each other. Like, that was, that was the point. But at the same time, it kind of took away from the fact that Godzilla and Kong were beating the crap out of each other, because their groups never really collided. It was never like, like to be completely honest the whole mecha godzilla thing at the end i wasn't like i it, it didn't feel climactic to me it was kind of like okay here we are now you know yeah like i was kind of hoping on uh, i was hoping hoping on on mecha godzilla to show up a lot sooner which is something we talked about before like we yeah. were hoping on him showing coming up sooner and like showing himself to be like an actual force but again, he just ended up being like a five minute, I think. like Cameo, really? Yeah, cameo. Yeah, and that was my other thing. I don't know. I, and I know that Adam Wingard has said, did you see where he said there's a five hour cut of this movie? Oh my God, don't start this bullshit again. I know, I know, I know. Cut. And I'm, I am not, Warner Brothers, if you're watching, I am not saying hashtag release the, the Wingard cut. I am not. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Um, now, if we're being completely honest, I would take a five-hour cut of this movie just because I would. <laughs> honestly, honestly, yeah, I take. But it, you but know let's what? Not, let's not. Let's not I'm, get. In. I'm not going to cross that border. We're gonna. We're gonna leave that alone. Um, yeah. And I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe they had to cut out some of the people storyline to make. I'm it sure work. because supposedly, uh, O'Shell, uh, what's his name? You know what I'm talking about? Um ice cube son yeah he's yeah. supposed to be in this movie he was supposed to be in this movie i loved his character but that's what i'm talking about like there were characters that even though like to be completely honest ice cube young baby ice cube i don't know what his name i think it's o- o'shea or o'shea something like jackson that. or something O'Shea, like that, yeah. yeah 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 like 
his character didn't really like i mean it didn't like add a ton of like exposition but it was fun just him being there and like i mm-hmm. cared about the people in um in king of the monsters like when when millie bobby brown's mom died and she said all hail the king like that meant something it was like wow like it was mm-hmm. like the story all of these character arts finally like met and built up and paid off and i felt like all of the mediocre carry arc co- character carry arc character arts right. in godzilla versus kong never really paid off like there was at the end when godzilla and kong like roared at each other for the last time and, Ka- and kong dropped the axe like all right like we're good go like turn around go back that in the scene, ocean. we're good that now. scene right there was by far one of my favorite i'll be honest it was and the music like, was phenomenal in mm-hmm. that scene too it felt like all right they have like they fought but they have a little bit of respect for each other now yeah like, exactly like they're okay like um, God- godzilla was like ready to rumble and Kong was like you know what man look i i didn't want to do any of this so he just dropped the axe and Godzilla was like yes Kong still standing there like I literally just want to go somebody take me home like that's all I want I don't <laughs> yeah. care like be king I don't care I don't want to be king I just want to go home yeah um but yeah so that was my biggest issue with the whole thing I I, I just I when they do continue this I hope that they they do try to flesh out the the character arcs a little bit more like and even little things like you know it felt there was weight to the characters in King of the Monsters. But even with Mecha Godzilla, like if we're being completely honest, if that kid wouldn't have poured the whiskey on that, the computer board, yo, do you remember, do you Kong, remember what would I have, said? Kong would have died. They both yeah. would have died. The humans yeah. would have been screwed because he would have killed Kong. And then mm-hmm. Godzilla was already half dead at that point. So, I mean, like both of them would have died and then they would have been screwed. So, really, the kid was the one that defeated mecha godzilla kong just finished the job <laughs> yeah you remember you remember that comment i made whenever uh the kid was talking to that the other guy and he was like i uh, we need to figure out a way to stop it i literally turned to brad and i was like really a fucking kid's gonna stop this machine i don't it just it felt like it, it felt was cheapened it, yeah it made god it made mecha godzilla feel, feel so cheap because he is such a strong uh kaiju like in the in the monster yeah. verse. not 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 the legendary monster verse, but like in toho's rights like mecha godzilla is a powerful machine in every single iteration of of mecha godzilla he he has laid waste yeah. to a lot of things and uh i don't know like granted I, I i never liked the design totally i think the design is cool i wanted to ask you about that what you thought of mecha's design in this i thought it was i thought it made sense yeah for who that he was fighting because right. most of them most of the most of the mecha godzillas that the three mecha godzillas that were made recently were made to fight these certain monsters so like mm-hmm. when mecha godzilla came out it was to fight uh that certain godzilla which is more agile more ready to fight and king right. Caesar was there too and then the second one he was more bulky and slow because uh godzilla was bulky and slow and he had a jetpack because he was because Rodan was in that movie too. Right. Yeah. So and then when uh Mecha Godzilla 3 came out, Kiru, he needed almost every bit of that because that Godzilla was almost a culmination of all of the other two. So like they they these Mecha Godzillas were built to fight these certain people, these certain monsters in the movie. So whenever I saw the design, I was like, okay, he looks like Godzilla, so obviously it's to match up with him. But also he has longer arms because you know Kong is you know longer, stronger, mm-hmm. and uh, he has much more of a reach advantage. So they obviously needed to make that so he could take on um, King, take on Kong. Which honestly, I love the fa- I love that like super powered uh, right cross that Mecha Godzilla yeah. has. It socks Godzilla so bad. It literally looked like he got knocked out every single time. Well, it was like it's a Mike funny. Tyson punch. It's funny because when you know, Godzilla b- fights Kong and like he's leaving or whatever. But when Mecha Godzilla shows up, Godzilla's like, "Oh, all right, let's go." I get, yeah, you, you're gonna make me show you too. All right, let's go. And he like runs at him. And mm-hmm. when Mecha starts fighting him and like whooping that ass, Godzilla look like the look on his face is like, yeah, like it, he it, like he he's looks- completely caught off guard and he has no idea what to do. He he looks like he looked like Ronda Rousey when he's flying fighting uh 
like he looks like one of those UFC fighters where like when they get like clipped and they're like trying to like stay in that was pretty much godzilla the entire time while mecha godzilla was just laying waste when he grabbed godzilla by his neck and just started yeah. smashing him into windows well, i was like yo what the heck are they doing to my boy even even when he lets him go and it's like that tracking shot of like godzilla's face as he falls yeah the, his eyeballs were like <laughs> Like roll it in the back of his head, like he, like he had just been rocked by something he was not prepared for. And yeah. then even when they revive Kong, um, with by the way, yeah, that's that was another over. thing. I was like, I don't know, this is a little strange. Like they're giving him like the like the that CPAP machine, like clear the defibrillator, yeah. But the their spaceship things, and we're gonna get into the whole middle or hollow earth thing with all of I I don't know, we'll, we'll get there, but. Mm-hmm when they revived kong and he first saw mecha godzilla i feel like in his head he was like <sighs> he he really didn't want to get back up he he, he was like he, are you he was like he looked at the girl and he was like can we really just go home yeah like he was like why should like why should i help him man like i he, yeah he was trying to kill me a little bit ago i almost died like i don't want to do this and then you could tell he was like <sighs> I gotta do the right thing. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I guess exactly. I need to. Which, by the way, but, that scene when he gets up and they like, like when when he re- when he was like fixing his uh, shoulder, I thought it was a badass scene. He literally smashed, yeah, smashed man, his yeah, shoulder into the building and just and got back well, into the fight. And I thought I'll, it was dope. I'll say when um he dude he was trying to pull a Peter Jackson's Kong. Mecca was when he he had Godzilla's jaws and he was trying to like rip his jaws apart no he was trying he that mecha godzilla was trying to do the thing uh uh well to breathe godzilla yeah to did. breathe the stuff down yeah yeah and i thought uh, at that moment i was like oh my god we, we about to see godzilla die right here I'm well, not gonna it, lie. i was like fully expecting it it reminded me of peter jackson's kong when he like br- like he like ripped the jaws apart of the the v-rex yeah which was a dope so that's one of the dopest kong scenes ever when he does that in that movie um but i will say i wasn't i thought the mecha godzilla thing happened kind of quickly it wasn't really built up it was just like and he's here and they're gonna fight him and he's gone like it was just kind of wasted not wasted but it was I, i would have liked it to be built up a little bit more but i will say when he was when he had g by the jaws and kong jumped on his back and was roaring i will say that was that was the one that was one of the few moments in the movie i was like yep yeah i give respect for that like yeah mad respect man kong get, kong get, he's got kong has got a nutsack on him i will say yes, that because you saw he really he, does because he knows what that beam can do to him yeah because you saw the funniest scene i ever saw this is where i felt bad for kong at this moment at this when he got hit by his atomic breath i felt so bad it made me realize wait <laughs> well, this is a, this is a monkey against a nuclear lizard he kind of like moaned like when it hit him he was like <laughs> oh like like he made like he, he groaned he made a noise but yeah he definitely felt that shit yeah let, let's talk about the fight scenes a little bit because i if anything um the movie delivered on the fight scenes and that's mm-hmm. why that's why i tried to not really let the the storyline hinder my score because they promised good fight scenes between godzilla and kong and that's what we got they delivered on what they promised um the first time we really saw them fight was on the aircraft carrier um in the which i honestly forgot in about, the ocean. but i like it yeah i liked it too um you got to suspend disbelief a little bit when when kong is jumping from aircraft care i was like there's no way yeah there is no way and even when they were like exchanging blows on that one i was like dude it's like it's basically like it, you that's and me. not possible it's like if you or me were just like fighting each other on a canoe you both know, fall off. Right? could do with sink it would yeah. be in the water like there's nothing about it that made sense but obviously it went down to like you know them swimming in the going to yeah. the ocean which i thought that scene alone was badass that was it very made, cool um, it made godzilla look like an absolute yeah monster like a shark uh-huh. just swimming around well and it, it's kind of cool because like you know that scene was built up very well very very well because we got to see kong 
all strapped in or whatever. And then when the little girl um, put her hand on the wall and she was like, like you could see, she knew like, oh crap. What it and was, yeah. that was built up very well. Um, I liked when what's her name said, like, you have to let Kong go. Like, if you want to survive this, like you gotta, you gotta unchain him and let him like do his thing or we're all going to die. Um, that, it, that whole, the build up to that scene was really, really well done. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously seeing the, the vantage point of seeing Godzilla, like swim up out of the water, dive onto the aircraft carrier. And like, as soon as he lifted his head, Kong punched him. I thought that whole thing, it was shot beautifully, man. It was really, really well done. The CGI in this movie was a 10. Killer. It was an 11. Yep. It was fan. It was honestly, it, and I say this 100%, it was probably some of the best CGI I've ever seen in a movie. It, it was really well done. Even little things like like we were talking about a minute ago. When it Kong, almost looked motion captured too, which I thought was like it, yeah. hella dope, which I'm pretty sure it is to a certain degree because um, really? uh, King, of, King of the Monster was motion captured too to a certain I didn't degree. know that. Yeah, like they used three actors to play Honestly, Ghidorah's head. I think that that's – I think that motion capture probably looks better because – I mean, CGI, there's not really as much nuance in mm. motion capture. I mean, like, look at Kong from 2005. I mean, that motion capture, he looks good in that movie. Mm. And, I, I mean, we've talked about that before. I think we talked about it that in episode three when we were talking about Godzilla, our predictions for Godzilla versus Kong, like, months yeah. ago. Yeah. I mean, like, the motion capture in Peter Jackson's Kong is, um, I mean, he that it still holds up today. Yeah, it still solid. looks amazing. And I you're probably right. This was motion capture, I would imagine, because it it look I mean, even their movements and everything, like it the was way so they moved was so, so, so much better. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, even see like little things, like I had mentioned this to you when they're in Hong Kong fighting and Godzilla, he was like slithering like a lizard. Like he it was kind of creepy looking because he was like on all fours and his head was low and then he would like jump up and then he'd be like down low again um or even like seeing kong in hollow earth when he was moving like a gorilla like swinging off of the things or when he was swinging off of buildings um or when he was on his knuckles like on all fours moving like a gorilla i like that stuff i like seeing them act like that it's Mm -hmm. more realistic than godzilla kind of like hobbling around and you know you have to admit in the first Godzilla film and even in King of the Monsters some, Godzilla looked a little bit like luggy. Yeah, he looked... like he looked mm-hmm. like he was too heavy for himself, like he needed to like hit the gym for a little bit, lose a couple of pounds. But I thought they both were way more agile in this movie, which was kind of cool. And I yeah, like I like that, that scene, version. Yeah. Like in Hong Kong whenever when Kong jumps on Godzilla's back and they're like fighting each other in the last minute like that moment right there, it was so like well done because like you could see like the struggle between yeah. both of them as they were trying to like get get on top of one another. Like that scene right there, like I don't know, it just seemed really. Are you talking about fast. in Hong Kong? Yeah, that whole that whole fight scene was just so fast paced. Did you notice that? Like, I'm glad you just said that. Like about getting on top of one another, they were trying to get like the upper hand. Yeah. Like Godzilla would like try to climb on top of him and then Kong would try to swing and get on top of him. Like one was trying to like stand over top of the other, which if you think about it, that's the best vantage point. If you're trying to like really like sucker punch somebody or bite somebody, that's the best vantage point to be. Yeah. It's very, again, it's like very animalistic. Like it's to the point where it's like, if you get on top of one another, if either one were to get on top of one another, like, they would have died again, as yeah. you could see with Godzilla. As soon as Godzilla was finally able to get God, King Kong on his back, and just like you saw what he did to him, like yeah. straight up ripped him yep. apart. Definitely. So like that was like the whole point. Like it wasn't like it wasn't just like a standing straight up brawl. Like they were trying to like get one one or the other down to like absolutely mm-hmm. mack them. And yeah. uh, I think that just goes to show like how powerful these two creatures are. That's why they're the last two standing because. I mean, these two are formidable creatures that yeah. have taken down a lot of a lot of creatures, like right. and well. So when it came down to these two fighting, like 
it was gonna be a battle. Like I'm sure yeah. all the other Godzilla, all the other monsters Godzilla has fought, were pretty quick. You know, you know. I, I mean, you it saw was what a happened battle movie. still. Yeah, but I mean, it was a battle, but it was. I'm sure they all happened quick. But right. these two, I swear to man, they this is it was about it was like round one, two, three. Yeah. Like they were going at it. Would you say that yes, Godzilla is king, and yes, he is the most powerful of the Earth ones of the Titans on Earth? But would you say Kong is like next in line of like you don't mess with him? I like I like what you said before this podcast started. Have uh, yes, Godzilla is king, but Kong like made himself a certified badass. Yeah, he yeah. really did. Man. Because like honestly, God, he like he took it all with suave. Like he like mm-hmm. he took no he. He didn't hide from anything. The second danger came, he was like, I guess I got to fight. Because yeah. you saw what happened whenever he got into Hollow Earth. He thought everything was cool. He was running around and everything. Right. And right. then the war right. bats came, and he was like, fuck, I guess I got to kick their ass and and kill mm-hmm. them, which is what he did. And then when Godzilla came, he saw Godzilla, and he said, well, <laughs> got to kick some ass again. Yeah. He lost that one. But then well, whenever – it's just every time there's a – there's something like confronting him like he does not back down he does not run right. away well and that's part of that you know i that goes back to like the animalistic nature like gorillas are like that primates are i mean even look at people like when two high school boys get in a fight with each other neither one of them wants to back down even if one really overpowers the other the other one is still going to like go out with dignity you know what i mean they're still going to be like I, you know, all right, you got me, but like, F you, basically, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And even, you know, even in the point where, um, where it, it was like, okay, Godzilla's won. Like, when he had Kong on his back, and Kong was like trying to crawl and like stand back up, and Godzilla had him, like, he was like slitting his chest, and he was like, he had his foot on him. Um, and when Godzilla roared in his face, like, stay down like do not get back up and kong started roaring back at him i think that was my favorite point in the entire movie because that was like that was the point where i was like holy shit neither one of them is gonna stop like they are going to that like i think kong knew like you could see it in his face like kong knew he was like he had lost and that he couldn't overpower g but like that pissed him off even more. So he was like, you know what? He's about to kill me and I'm going to go out roaring. Like, like that was, yeah, that's, yeah. Just how, that's how gorillas are. That's how primates are. And I yeah, thought exactly. that was, I, that, that scene, I liked that scene better than I liked the scene at the end when Kong dropped the ax and they looked at each other like, all right. Yeah. I thought, I all thought right. that, <laughs> that, that scene, whenever Godzilla had the upper hand and was like, like he honestly could have gave the final blow and mad respect for g that yeah. he, that he was like you know what all right you yeah get it now exactly like, like you you understand like where i where i am on the on mm-hmm. the pyramid on the totem and, pole yeah and i give i give respects to kong because i i was when i saw kong get up i was so scared that godzilla was just gonna turn around and just like just fire blast this man when he down. when he started getting up i was like i was like stay down <laughs> <laughs> i was like stay down boy stay well down. you know e- even all the godzilla fans who were like act like kong haters but they're really not even all the godzilla fans were like no no no, no. like no yeah, <laughs> like please, if it was a down. boxing ring and the two of them were in there you'd see everybody like <laughs> don't don't re- yeah don't. exactly so i don't know it was oh god yeah the fight scenes in this, in this movie and those phenomenal. those moments there man i, I could talk about that that moment right there of them just yelling at each other it was just so it was so powerful because it was just because like again this is just something that like everyone has talked about since the movie right uh like was announced like they're like it's gonna be Mm -hmm. a battle so whenever they were yelling at each other it was just like a culmination of just like all of this all of this talk and all of this battle that just went went through and um yeah, again, I give mad respects to both of them because not only yeah. did G like say show mercy, but Kong was like, oh God, okay. Like he did not want to give up. So I yeah. that's why that's why I, I give Kong badass badge right there. Yeah, very cool. Um other thing I wanted to talk about, let's talk about Hollow Earth a little bit and that whole um real big sci-fi twist 
I kind of felt like compared to the rest of the month, you know, the rest of the monster verse, obviously. Yes. It's a sci-fi film. Yes. It's, it's giant monsters fighting each other. Like, okay. Obviously you got, again, you got to suspend disbelief a little bit, Mm -hmm. but I felt like this whole hollow earth storyline and the thing with apex cybernetics and the, 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 um, what were they called? The, the ship things, um, the heaves, heaves yeah. the heaves, it kind of came out of nowhere. I was like, uh, when the hell did we get this technology? Like, this wasn't, like, you didn't have this in King of the Monsters. Like, where did this come from? Yeah. It hasn't been that long. So that's why I, that it, it kind of felt like it came out of nowhere for me. Um, and again, that kind of goes back to the storyline thing. I wasn't completely wild about the Hollow Earth thing. It's cool, and I, it, it's kind of a cool origin story for the Titans, but I, I don't know. I, I almost like the thought of like, got these things were just sleeping. They were hidden. Godzilla was hidden. Kong was hidden on Skull Island. Nobody had ever found him. Like it, 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 there's almost more mystique and mystery in the fact that like, holy shit, how did we never find these? Like, as long as humans have been exploring throughout like the 20th century and the 21st century, how Mm. did we, how did we miss this? And then hollow earth, it just kind of felt like a very strange, um, it it, it was a little weird. And even seeing Kong in that environment was kind of strange. Um, the whole anti great, it looked great. I mean, it looked mm -hmm. dope once they got in there, but it was just very, I was like, whoa like how where how did we get here what do you think of hollow earth well it's um it's been set it's been like introduced before like oh really a, yeah so when i didn't in, know like, that in godzilla versus megalodon uh hollow earth was introduced in that movie i and, did not know that wow yeah so it's 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 a it's a known area okay but it wasn't explored the way it's being explored now yeah. and um it's just how can i put this i think it's cool but it opens up a new gateway of different of them to bring back bring different monsters you know what i mean right and and that's kind of where i i kind of justified it in my head is like mm -hmm. moving forward you know it, it felt a little cheesy almost it felt a little like too over the top but at the same time moving forward like it'll be strange if the next movie doesn't talk about hollow earth at all i mean you got it godzilla took his atomic breath and blasted a hole a hole from the crust like the the surface of the earth to its core in hollow earth that's gonna change the climate that's gonna (laughs) like that's gonna change a lot of shit so I don't, I, I feel like moving forward, like that has to be a big, plus Kong is there now. Like he's not on Skull Island anymore. I don't know. I feel like that that's kind of a big, like we just took a really big left turn that I was not expecting to take. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So exactly. moving forward, I think like what you, exactly what you just said, that that's going to be their way of bringing in new monsters. I mean, you got to think not only are humans now dealing with all of the monsters on the surface, which I thought it was kind of strange. I know we got the bracket at the beginning, but I thought it was kind of strange that we showed all of these monsters waking up at the end of King of the Monsters. And then they were, they were were nowhere to be found in this movie. I thought that was a little strange. Yeah. I don't like that. I didn't like that either. I thought that was very strange. I was like, I thought that was kind of a cool thing at the end. I was like, wow, this is kind of a different take. Like, you know, usually it's like years of peace, Godzilla fights somebody more years of peace godzilla comes back and fights somebody Mm -hmm. but i was like wow this is kind of a different take like they're gonna have to like you know human beings are gonna have to restructure life and they didn't talk about that they didn't talk about it at all and that was again i think one of the um the 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 misdirects and the the failures of this movie um not that there were a lot failures is a, a really tough word um but you know you have to deal with the monsters on the surface but there's going to be monsters coming out of hollow earth now mm-hmm. that are going to emerge that they've never seen before. So really Godzilla and Kong kind of got a lot of work on their hands. Cause there's going to be a lot of stuff now. 
Yeah. You know? So like it's gonna be I, the way I the way I figured the way it's gonna be now is like Kong is like the gatekeeper of Hollow Earth, and then whoever gets past Kong, like Godzilla, can be like, all right, guy, like plenty down. Yeah. That's the yeah, way yeah, I kind of yeah. figure it'll be. But oh God, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this movie showed me that they were not they're not expecting a future. You know what I mean? What do you mean? Because they were tying loose ends in this movie, pretty much. Like all of those monsters, oh. all those monsters in King of the Monsters were like they were bowing down to Godzilla. It's almost as if why would you why 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 is Godzilla fighting them if they're bowing down to him? You know what I mean? Yeah. I so like whenever it showed the bracket of all of them getting like defeated, it's like well, why? Like it makes no sense. Like they're literally wiping the entire entire slate of monster that they were hinting at introducing yeah. in King of the Monsters all and all the way up and they're basically saying like okay it's just these last two Uh and i'm like okay that then you're what you're telling me right now is that you don't have any set future for what's to you have no right next project coming up because i know legendary and toho are like this right now but they still need to negotiate the rights to certain monsters to come back that's why they created all these monsters i think I wouldn't say they don't have a future. I I think, you know, Adam Wingard even said like there were scenes cut out of this movie that could have set up something else. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, another issue I had with this, and and again, different movies. This was about Godzilla and Kong going at it. That was the point. But King of the Monsters had this, apocalyptic end of days like biblical revel like book of revelations talk like mm-hmm. it felt dire it felt like a much more dramatic event than we got in Godzilla versus Kong like i like i mean you know moving towards when Godzilla die quote unquote dies and they use the what what was it called the earth destroyer um no not oh, oxygen destroyer. destroyer oxygen destroyer 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 not destroyer wrong wrong thing um but you know when godzilla quote unquote dies and they use the oxygen destroyer and all those things like it it felt like if the humans lose if like if godzilla loses and the humans lose it's over like this is this is the end this is the mm-hmm. end of everything and I didn't feel like that with it. This movie didn't feel as like the stakes were as high. You know what I mean? And again, I know it's a different movie. It wasn't, Kong wasn't trying, one of them wasn't trying to take over the world and trying to kill every, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was more about the two of them just meeting up. Um, but I, I wish the stakes would have felt a little bit higher. And that even kind of goes into Mecha Godzilla. Like, I feel like if they would have built up Mecha Godzilla just a little bit more, his entrance and when the two of them had to take him down would have been more of like whoa like Mm -hmm. they got they really need to pull this off or it's going to change everything and honestly it kind of felt like man like it was all right so i i hope that moving forward um i i do think that this monster let's talk about this let's talk about the future of the monster verse as we kind of um wrap up our our review here the, i would I, I think the monster verse has a shelf life i don't think they can continue it and do 10 more movies i don't think they can make an mcu out of the monster verse mm-hmm. but i do think that you could probably give both godzilla and kong at least one more movie and then even maybe do two more movies that has an Infinity War Endgame style thing. I've seen a lot of people say say um, that they would like to see Gigan. I've seen a lot of that. Yeah. A lot of people saying that, like, because, you know, especially with this, um, re- or not restore the Snyderverse. Wrong, hold wrong on, hashtag. Hold on, hold on. Either, either there were, I was going to mention something real quick. Uh, there's a, someone did a screenshot of, uh, the computers of Mecha Godzilla, and it showed an insignia of different monsters, mm-hmm. and it showed a lot of them. Oh, it showed really? A lot of a lot of Toho rights monsters like Baragon, Gigan, and a couple others I noticed. So, like Gigan is and is like 
recognized in the movie. Yeah. And I just I hope they bring bring these other monsters because I mean those other monsters hold some weight. They do. They yeah. hold their own weight in the movies. And well, and that was something I wanted to ask you is like moving forward, what other what big baddie, what big monster do you want to see next? Uh Destroyer. Because they that's the only thing I can think of that's next. Because what pisses me off is that they're not they didn't bring up the ramifications of King of the Monsters. If you think about right. it, right? They really didn't. Honestly, like this felt gone. like this felt like a prequel to King of the Monsters. A little bit. It, like it kind of. I mean, obviously, I know it's not. And mm-hmm. I mean, if if you take out the people, this could have been a prequel. If you only had the monster stuff, this could have been a prequel to King of the Monsters. It could have been. You know. I um, but I, I just I wanted to ask you, like, who you know, what villain do you want to see next? Because. Uh, you know, and, you know, kind of scrolling through Twitter and looking into what people are saying about the movie and listening to reviews. Um, I've seen quite a few people say that they would like to see Gigan. It's like the next big baddie. So I don't really I saw, know a whole lot about Gigan, but I saw the, the, the other, the other three, I see this one post that I see right here. Uh, it says, uh, it says because I would like to see Godzilla get bullied by all of them, and the <laughs> thought, and the four that I see right here is uh, Destroya, uh, Biolante, Gigan, and uh, I forgot this guy's name, Monster X or Monster Z or something like that. It was in Godzilla Final Wars. It becomes it becomes Ghidorah pretty much. Like it's oh, okay. Like a, yeah, it's like a yeah. their take on Ghidorah, but. I do agree with the other three, like Gaigan, Biolante, and Destroya. I think they need to do a high C. They need a they need to mm. reboot the high C franchise where it showed yeah. Ghidorah. They had Ghidorah, Mothra, uh, Mecha Godzilla, uh, Space Godzilla, and uh, Destroya. Yeah. I think they need to reboot those because well, that franchise right there was top notch. That Millennia yeah. right there was pretty spot on. Good storylines you know. there too. They were all connected. The entire era of the high C franchise was connected by either it wasn't either it wasn't the same characters, but they were connected in some way. Right, right. Well, what what I would personally like to see, because like I said a few minutes ago, I think I, I don't know if you can do an MCU of the monster verse. No, you can't. I, I I don't think you can it, take it, it that has to far. Be, it has to be focused on Godzilla. Right. So they're gonna have to leave a couple of things out, which that's fine. That's okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, there there are some monsters that I think people would like to see a lot more than others. You know, yeah. even if there's a quick cameo, um, you know, an opening scene of Godzilla kicking the shit out of one of them. You know, that's like not as well known. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, G- Ghidorah felt like it was an end of days if they don't do this it's over like there is nothing left even the scenes with the people that was the other thing we didn't really get in Godzilla versus Kong is even when they were in Hong Kong we didn't see anybody running we saw a couple there, a couple but there weren't there, there were no people like like you know usually when when the the volcano scene with Rodan um coming out of the volcano and Ma, and um good uh Ghidorah I almost said go die I don't know I have no idea when Ghidorah is on top of the volcano like flapping his wings like we saw crowds of people like running like it looked like chaos there Mm -hmm. was kind of no real like people chaos in this it was just like Godzilla and Kong fighting which I know that was the point I'm not I'm not judging I'm just saying there, there wasn't much of that um but what I would like to see moving forward and I've seen a couple people that agree with me um I actually tweeted about this today on on our movie account. But, you know, what if they, you know, they give Kong a Middle Earth film? Because really, we haven't ever gotten a second Kong film. Yeah. Um, And that's about Kong, like you said, being the gatekeeper. You know, Kong is King Kong in Middle Earth and Godzilla is king on the surface. Um, And, you know, what if you throw in all these other monsters, you give Kong a film you give Godzilla a film, and then we build towards this climactic Infinity War Endgame Snyder Cut level um, thing where maybe even Ghidorah is resurrected because doesn't that happen at one point? Isn't Ghidorah resurrected from... Yeah, but I think they threw that away too, honestly. Really? 
Yeah, because whenever I saw the skull of that Ghidorah, I was like, also, what happened to that group that found the head? Exactly. I wondered that, too. Maybe it was a different head. I don't know. No. I don't know. No, because it, it was just one head left. And that landed on Apex thing. Like, was what happened there only to that one group? head left? Yeah. I'll have to go back and rewatch it. Because the one was ripped off in uh, New Mexico and Mexico. And uh, the last one, the other, like, whenever he regenerated that one, that head mm. was left in Mexico. And yeah. then the two on the sides were melted away from nuclear Godzilla. And then. Mm the last one was just either eaten by Godzilla pretty much. Yeah. And it just made no sense as to like, when I saw that, I was like, okay, so there's no Mecha King Ghidorah unless they use the bones to create, to create again, but it's, it, they won't work because Mecha King Ghidorah had, it had two Mechas and one like actual Ghidorah. And uh-huh. I think they just threw that away. Probably. I think I, I think I don't know. I like Adam Wingard's movie. I do. It's good, but I think he threw away a lot of things that uh that they could have the previous. Done. Yeah, like he didn't. He didn't continue much that happened in the King of the Monsters, which would have been great. Yeah, and and I know it, it's the point of this was to see Godzilla and Kong fight. That was the point. But yeah. what what I was gonna say is like, and again, I've seen a lot of people say this how cool would it be for like the big epic conclusion of this monster verse and again this can be four or five movies down the road this doesn't have to be like the next movie ends it mm-hmm. i mean you can still give kong a film give g a film and then have a build up like two build up films to the the end where you have whether it's mecha king Ghidorah or Ghidorah is resurrected or a different villain or something is leading his followers of monsters and then you have Godzilla and Kong rallying up all of the monsters on Earth. <laughs> you're no, great, you're, you're great. no, no. I I I can I, I kind of followed you with the whole like snipe like MCU finale kind of thing. But when you when you when you did that like the whole battle, no. You don't want to see like Ghidorah's side and Godzilla and Kong side like. No, mm. I'd much rather. See, I I I do I do agree with you. Like that that would be dope. Because like in Godzilla uh, in nineteen and like in the seventies and the Showa period, it was kind of like that. Obviously, because mm-hmm. of budget, it didn't have that cinematic experience. But it was pretty much uh, Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, I think it was Angiris, and someone else, and they were fighting Ghidorah. Like they mm-hmm. were trying to like fight Ghidorah, and obviously they won. But that was like that was like one of those moments. I think. I don't think it should. I don't think it should be like that type of thing. What you're talking about? I'm not gonna lie. They could do it. They could. It would be dope. But I don't think that's the. Well, even if you build it up to another, I mean, who? Again, you're more of a Godzilla verse dude than I. You know a lot more about it than I'm. Very surface level with all of Godzilla's villains, but I know Ghidorah is kind of his like arch nemesis, if you had to say. Yeah. what's another one that's kind of on the same level as Ghidorah like you could get this like end of days it's all going to end if Ghidorah wins type deal what's it, another monster that be, could again it would be Destroyer okay Destroyer is the is the biggest bad of there is and you, but the problem is is that you have to build that up because right. the only reason the only reason why Destroyer existed was to kill Godzilla because if they didn't kill Godzilla or subdue him, like he, like it turned into like it wasn't like the big battle was gonna destroy everything. In 1990, 1995 with Godzilla versus Destroyer, like it was, it was the world trying to stop Godzilla because he, if he were to blow up, it would be end of days. Like the entire world would basically blow up, supernova level explosion. And uh, that's why they created Destroya to subdue him to a certain degree. I think so. I think it was, but honestly, it was, I think it was something else. But um, Destroya was created, was basically created to subdue Godzilla in his like full radioactive form. Mm. And that, the reason why that happened, because in the previous movies, it showed Godzilla getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Like after every single battle from, 
Godzilla versus Biollante, Mothra, Space Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla. You could see his powers getting increasingly big and larger to the point where it overloaded him, which is yeah. what I thought they were going to do whenever it, whenever they gave Godzilla that nuclear like blast like from like the the you know what I'm talking about in King mm-hmm. of the Monsters when they did that I thought like that was going to like plant a seed of that that time period but it doesn't look like they're doing it no so like I think that's like the Shoya is the the end of days character you're looking for okay that's well I mean for. would you like to see you know take three or four more movies and build up Destroya and then maybe even you know our Godzilla and Kong lose in one of them and then in the final film, Godzilla and Kong both have to take down Destroya. I mean, would you like to see that? And I say that because I don't think, I, I think this movie, and, and that's something that I, I, I must say I, I'm proud of Adam Wingard for doing, is he established Kong as a part of this now. Like mm-hmm. before, Kong was kind of off on Skull Island. Like he kind of did his own thing. He wasn't really, he didn't really have anything to do with the whole Ghidorah thing. But now I feel like Kong is a part of this, you know, like, yeah. I think, I think it's going to be very odd if, and that's kind of, again, goes back to the whole hollow earth thing. I, it's going to be so weird if in the, if we get a third Godzilla film and there is no mention of Kong or of hollow earth or of anything that happened in this one, like I, that's just going to be weird. It's not going to make any sense because I mean, obviously, we we talked about, you know, Godzilla versus Kong wasn't as big of an event as King of the Monsters was. But it's still going to be strange if it's just never talked about. You know, so I feel like Kong is kind of a part of this now. So that's why I say if they bring in Destroya, I feel like it would have to be Godzilla and Kong against Destroya because it'd be be weird if it didn't. What if they did that? What if they killed Kong and that was like, I don't know if Godzilla would really give a shit, but, but I mean, if, but I think I think it would cause. But then again, it, it Godzilla would, has emotion. Yeah, I mean, he's if the two of them if they're really are like all right now and they kind of get attached to each other, then I mean I don't know. I don't yeah, know. it was. We're it was, probably it was, wishful thinking, but it was like a, it was like a Martha thing if you think about it. It was have pretty you seen much. the memes when they're roaring it when the two of them are roaring at each other like face to face and Kong is like Martha. Godzilla's like, why did you say that name? <laughs> yeah well i mean it kind of was to a certain degree because i'm sure because like you, you know you know how like godzilla and mothra had like some symbiotic relationship like mm-hmm. when mothra was like on his like la- on her last legs and Ghidorah was coming mothra was like no i'm not gonna back down and just like sacrifice himself and like you know it gave godzilla that extra boost yeah i think i think i think i don't know what i'm just throwing i'm just throwing emotional support over there but when when uh, Kong was roaring at uh, Godzilla, it reminded him of Mothra. <laughs> it was like, oh shit, this guy's not gonna back down. Kind of like my girl Mothra. Okay, I give my respects. I'll let you live. I'm not gonna do that to you. Yeah. So like, I don't know. But I think that if moving forward with this, I do, I, I see Kong with an expiration date. Unfortunately. Really. Yeah. You agree though that if they like in the next Godzilla film if Kong isn't mentioned at all I mean I'm not even saying Kong has to be like a a serious player in it but if they don't mention Kong at all wouldn't that be a little strange at this point because like Kong kind of has a big deal to do with it now yeah yeah so I don't know I'm glad we agree on that Mm -hmm. I think that uh I think Megalodon could be a next monster that could possibly uh I come out of that. existence because i mean it he came from hollow earth in 19 in the 60s and uh it would be interesting i mean you could have kong fighting megalodon and megalodon escaping and getting to the surface and mm-hmm. godzilla needs to take him down pretty much i yeah. can see that happening i will say it'll be interesting to see you know because i know kong is going to be kind of the gatekeeper between the surface and hollow earth but i don't think that I don't think that he's going to, like, if Godzilla, like, goes to crawl down that hole and head into Hollow Earth, I don't think Kong is going to be like, what are you doing here? I think Kong is going to be like, hey, man, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> Go on in. Like, like, Kong, is that, Kong is he's that. Like, he's like, 
He's like, don't worry, I got everything handled down here. You, yeah, you, like you, don't have to check I, up on you, me. you can go back up there. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm good. I don't need help. I'm good. But um, man, it, it, it the fight scenes were amazing. The fight scenes were ten. It was the best fight scenes of the entire MonsterVerse so far. Um, the story was a little lackluster. The characters were a little lackluster. But again, we were here to see Godzilla versus Kong. That's what yeah. we were there for. We, I mean, yeah. we were there to see these two iconic monsters beat the hell out of each other, to put it frankly. And and I, they delivered on that. It's a seven point five for me. That's my. Oh, so you that, went up. I, okay. I did go up. It's a seven point five for guys, me. It's gone up a little we, bit. When we left the movie theaters, we we both gave our ratings, and uh, he started out with a seven. Yeah. And I gave it an and well, I gave it an eight. I rewatched it again and I was like, you know what? The storylines are dumb, but at the same time, we're not here for the storylines. So I I'll I'll give it a 7.5. It if it would have been less sci-fi out in left field, kind of like where did this come from? Mm-hmm. I think it would have been a little bit more. I think I would have been more of an in eight territory, but for it's a 7.5 for me. How about you? I'm going to stick with an eight. Mm. I thought I would go up, but talking about it and realizing everything that's like, okay. Only reason I'm giving it an eight is because of how much, how much they did. They left out yeah. from the previous that's why I give it an eight. If yep. they were going to introduce was... all these other things and like actually show the ramifications of everything that's happened, mm-hmm. I would have gave it at least like a nine or yeah, I, I would give it a nine. It's, it's not a 10 movie for me. The fight scenes is a fucking 20 out of 10. I give it yeah. that. Yeah, but I will, uh, I will completely agree with that. A movie as a whole, it's an eight for me, guys. Yep. So that's our review for Godzilla versus Kong. The other thing that pissed me off to no end. Okay. Not about the movie. Oh, okay. I swear. Like, you know, when, when the Mecha Godzilla toy leaked, or not even leaked, when it like people found it in Walmart and it was on Godzilla movies, we did a video about it. That's fine. Watch it if you will. I, I purposely didn't put the actual figure oh, in the thumbnail. I know what you're talking about now. But when I'm scrolling through YouTube, completely unrelated, I wasn't, I didn't hop on YouTube and be like, Godzilla versus Kong spoilers. Or I didn't hop on there and be like, Mecha Godzilla, full scene. But when I'm scrolling through YouTube and I see Kong holding Mecha Godzilla's head roaring, I was like, what the seriously? Like that kind of, I think that's the other reason that Mecha Godzilla was kind of lackluster for me. Cause I literally saw the entire thing on YouTube in like a two-second clip as I was yeah. scrolling. I've talked so to like I've talked anybody to who anybody who screen records HBO Max and shoves that on YouTube, you suck. You Me suck. Did. And I know we crapped on Warner Brothers last time, but that's crappy to Warner Brothers. That's crappy to Adam Wingard. That's crappy to anybody who like tried to make the movie. Even the same thing with people like like there are like complete Halloween kills scripts on Reddit and stuff and scripts for movies that aren't even made, like aren't even like filmed yet. Like, come on, man, that's crappy to do. I'm sorry, but it is. Brad's on that's my rant. That's yeah. my rant. That's my Ted talk. I just, yeah. I, I, I hate how much of this movie is on YouTube. Yeah. I think that's going to be, it really bothers me quick, quick. Now I think that's probably what's going to happen pretty Probably. much in the future is like if these things go to streaming service it's much easier to put it on youtube you know what i mean yeah so that's gonna happen a lot of movies are gonna be uh spoiled yeah pretty much but it happens and it is what it is what it is fine it just it that pisses me off man i just i hate i i hate stuff like that because like i'm somebody like like with Halloween Kills, that's Godzilla versus Kong and Halloween Kills. They are the two movies that, and Spider Man No Way Home. But like, they are the three movies this year that I am like, like, I have waited for this for a really long time. And so many people have waited for this. And you're like, you know what? If you put a script on Reddit, fine. But like, the people who just like post spoilers without any warning, you suck. 
Yeah. Like, like that is so crappy to do to these studios and to the people who are making these movies because like you're just you're just ruining it for people for the sake of ruining it or for your like five seconds of fame on reddit like or on youtube or whatever like that's just crappy man that's just crappy i hear but, you i don't know anyways that's our review for godzilla versus kong so loved it we both loved it fantastic congrats to adam wingard congrats to the, the cast and crew um and congrats to my boy godzilla for doing his thing whatever and well, congrats, congrats to Kong too, because you, you held your own. I'll be he honest. Did, he did hold his own. You held your own. Absolute badass. badass. Fa- my far one of my favorite iterations of Kong to this date. Yeah. So there you go. Absolutely. There the we both go. of us are given each of our monsters the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. So. They are no doubt the rulers of the monster verse. Yes, without a doubt. So. But a um, little bit of movie news before we before we wrap up here, before we get out of here. Um new synopsis for resident evil came out really which did you see resident evil's been pushed no i did not it got delayed um i believe it got delayed a month or so don't quote me on that i'm honestly not positive off the top of my head but it it wasn't delayed a whole lot it was just I, i think it was just a little bit of there are so many films that are trying to go for that like august through december period that i feel like they're really trying to shuffle around that's why disney kind of pushed some of theirs up like black widow is coming out in july now um which that new black widow trailer is awesome if you haven't seen that black widow trailer man you got to watch it it's amazing um but new synopsis for resident evil welcome to raccoon city and it says this once the booming home of pharmaceutical giant umbrella corporation Raccoon City is now a dying Midwestern town. The company's exodus left the city a wasteland with great evil brewing below the surface. When that evil is unleashed, the townspeople are forever changed and a small group of survivors must work together to uncover the truth behind Umbrella and make it through the night. Well. I kind of felt blindsided by that a little bit. Um, (laughs) I don't, I, I'll have to go, but I, one thing I want to do is before Resident Evil 8 um, and before this movie comes out, I want to go back and play the OG games. And I know they've remade two and three. So I want to like, I want to play through those again. Mm-hmm. I don't ever remember Raccoon City as being a dying Midwestern town. I mean, like, yeah, it was a city, but it was a bigger city. It's not, I mean, like when I think dying Midwestern town, I think like, some of these places we got here in Kentucky that are like out in the boondocks, like yeah, with like 600 people, like raccoon city is a city. I mean, it's not like New York or Chicago or Miami or LA, but it's still a city. So I, that's kind of like, that's kind of strange. The other thing is the company's exodus left the city a wasteland. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of like, what? I, I have I want to have high hopes for this movie, but at the same time I don't want them to sh- like I don't want to be disappointed when they screw it up. And I don't I don't say when they screw it up to say they're going to screw it up. I think there's a lot of things that I'm really looking forward to, and I think from what we've read and from what I've heard from Johannes Roberts and from the cast, I mean it, they seem like they're really trying to go back to like the roots of the game and yeah. make it feel like OG Resident Evil. But I I don't know that that syn- I read that synopsis last night and I was like. Well, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I mean, I hope uh, if it's going to be like a small, like suburban town, it, it reminds me of uh, reminds me of like the crazies. Have you seen that movie? I love that movie. I haven't seen yeah, it in a long time. It's it's a dope movie, but it look, but like, I hope they don't in, make it look like that. I mean, at least make it look like a, like it has to be a city, like obviously, because otherwise, yeah. otherwise it like, ruins the whole idea of like zombies because zombies are supposed to come in through every single corner and crevice of the town i hope they don't do that i hope they don't turn raccoon city like city with tall buildings and little and like you know i mean because it seems like the place yes it's surrounded by woods but i mean like it still has taller buildings it still has parks and a city hall i mean it's still it's like a you know it'd probably be like lexington you know yeah I would get like a Lexington vibe from it. 
but it i don't know it just it, it, it struck me as kind of strange saying that it left the city a wasteland because when i again when i think of a wasteland i think of like small little western town with nothing going on anymore like yeah, and that's exactly. not i don't know so that i thought that was kind of strange we'll have to see how that one plays that's a bold strategy cotton <laughs> we'll, <laughs> like, we'll, we'll see if this plays out yeah like well i don't know we'll uh we'll we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll have to see i don't know kind of scares me a little bit um other thing i wanted to talk about real quickly and this isn't a big one but we we talked about the dceu a whole lot last week did you see that they confirmed that robert patton's or yes robert patton's batman film that matt reeves is directing is going to be on earth 2 earth 2 i confirmed Mm -hmm. like not like actively it weirds me out that they're actively like yes it's set on earth 2 you know what i mean because if it was just a side story and it wasn't relevant to the dceu i would be like like why would you say that specifically like that's like like that's a piece of information that we don't need to know that's something we would like to find out you know right I mean? yeah and if they if they i don't know if they do that later i don't know that's strange to me um i i i don't know they're they're hinting at a multiverse thing and it's... they are and that's where my head went to especially with the flashpoint movie where and i don't know maybe dude what if maybe um they're doing this what if if uh, michael keaton can't do it if michael keaton does back out because we talked about that in episode 15 i mean michael keaton kind of sounds like he's real on the fence unsure about whether he's going to do it whether he's not going to do it um so i don't know maybe this is their way of uh backup plan yeah this is their backup plan i I don't i don't know um you know the the this came from a source at Warner Brothers that said, except for the Batman, which is set on an alternate Earth known to geeks as Earth 2, DC is plotting its films and shows to share the same universe. Um, key to setting up its new status quo will be The Flash on November 4th, 2022. And again, he, he did, say, whoever this source is, did say that DC is plotting, you know, to share the universe except for the Batman. But then why would you say it's on Earth 2? It's like you're sitting... I don't know. It's like... Uh, do you want ice cream? No, I'll take chocolate. Like, what the... Like, what? Like, what? I don't know. But it's just like... Rant, like it, it contradicts each other. You know what I mean? Like, that. Yeah. Like why would you say it's on Earth 2 if it's not going to be a multiverse thing? I don't know. I feel... I feel like they have no idea what they want to do. I like no. I, I seriously get the vibe they have n- and I'm not bashing like you're fine like you guys are fine you figure it out you do whatever you got to do but like I feel like they have no plan none almost certain of it that looks uh, like they do but they're just throwing these uh, little tidbits out because they want to the, the way it is she said because what her, what's her name was she said uh we got plenty we got we have a story coming up and things are coming and we and they she didn't go into detail, so now they're just like, we gotta give some. They gotta give them some. Um, there, that's on Earth too, pretty much. I would much rather I'd much rather have that thing be a side movie. I know. Me I too. wouldn't care. I wouldn't care if it was connected. Me too. I'd much rather a singular uh Batman me movie. Me too. I completely agree with that. But yeah. guys, that is going to do it for episode 16 of Let's Talk Movies. This has been our Godzilla vs. Kong spoiler review with a little tidbit, a little sprinkle, a little sea salt sprinkle of movie news in there. Um, we want to thank you for taking the time out of your week to hang out with us and to uh, to chat with us about Godzilla vs. Kong. We want to know what you think. Let us know if you're watching on YouTube in the comments below or if you're listening on Spotify or Google or Apple, tweet at us at We Talk the Movies. Let us know what did you think of Godzilla vs. Kong? What's your rating? How do you think it stacks up um, for the rest of the MonsterVerse? For me, it's in second place. I think I would still put King of the Monsters above it just in in terms of pure story. Um, but we both loved it. It's been a hit. It's making bank. I, th- I think it just reached $50 million today. 
in the global box or in the domestic box office, which is great. And it's eight percent in uh, Rot- Rotten Tomatoes. So yeah, in, in COVID terms, I mean, man, it, Godzilla versus Kong is kicking butt, and I'm glad it is because it deserves it. We've waited a long time, um, and that's just really, really great. So be sure to check out um, our Twitter and our Instagram pages. We will be making a special announcement about a series we've got coming up uh, for the next two or three weeks. Um, and we'll be announcing that on our page very shortly. So again, thank you so, so, so much. Be sure to find us on Twitter and Instagram at We Talk the Movies, same handle for both. And uh, leave us a like and a comment and let us know what you thought. So with that being said, we will talk to you all soon. See you next time. Peace. Peace. <laughs> you beat your chest. <laughs> <laughs>